Hi guys, Darren Neese here. Today we're looking at something that you're going to be using all the time in all your applications and power apps, which is toggle values. True, false. Yes, no. Boolean values. I have on the screen here a, a spinner that appears and disappears based on a variable. And that variable holds a Boolean value, which is true, false. Yes or no. So this button here switches that. Sometimes these values are called flags. Turn a flag on, turn a flag off. So like the uh, flag on your mailbox. So let's look at this button here. The name of our variable is GBL show spinner. And again, that holds a Boolean type value, true, false, yes, no. And this bang operator is the same as saying not. So the set is gonna take this variable, flip the value and put it again back into this variable. Just real quick, let me show you how this variable is initialized and declared. You do that in the app on start. I'm going to click on app over here on the side. Make sure this says on start and it's right here. Set global spinner true. So that's an essential part of this lesson is that you can put a Boolean yes, no, true, false value by using the keywords true, lowercase, it is case sensitive in the power FX language, true or false. So here we're going to set this to true. That's going to make that a spinner appear. We're going to do all of our database operations here to initialize the application. And when we're done, we're going to set it to false. So I just wanted to give you that background for this variable, how it was actually declared using the set the first time, which is right here, set explicitly to true, false. Use the not operator or the bang operator to reverse that. Sometimes Booleans are referred to as bit fields as well. So that's yet another way of describing a flag, a Boolean value, true, false, yes, no. There's all kinds of ways of describing this type of value. So let's get back to our screen. Now, we do have a, a spinner. I did a whole video on spinners or loading screens. I'll have the link below for you if you want to check it out. But this is about toggles and Booleans. So I have a group here that holds the image and the rectangle behind it. So if I use this again, this is turned on. If I go over to the, over to the home screen, I've got some controls here. And if it's on, it appears the top covers it up, letting the user know that something is going on. The application isn't frozen. Just wait a moment. So if I go back over here to the spinner, toggle that off, go back to the home screen, it's gone. So what I want to show you here is if you go down to the visible property for this group, which is just the image and the rectangle, I have the visible property set to that variable, which again is a Boolean value. How else would you use toggles or Boolean values in your applications? Well, you use them all the time, more than likely. For example, in this screen, the spinner screen, I can add other controls that deal really well with Boolean values. Let's add a checkbox. That would make sense. Let's also add a toggle control. We could also add radio buttons. We could have a drop down list. So you can use this all kinds of ways. So you're not just stuck to using just one control, one type of control. You can use all kinds of stuff. I mean, we could also put in here freeform text entry. All right, so let's move these around because we won't be able to see our spinner. Put our drop down list up there and then move these guys down. So what we're going to do to give the drop down list and the radio buttons the, va the appropriate values instead of using drop down sample. Instead of doing this, what we're going to do is we're going to use square brackets and we're going to give it uh, a table here with literal values and we'll say true, false, and I'm going to copy that, put it down here for the items for the radio buttons. So you got true, false doesn't need to be so big there. And what I want to do is I want to take this little variable that we've been using all along and set it as the default for all these controls. So here we go. Default, instead of false, it will be that. For the toggle, default, paste. These other controls are going to be a little tricky. So the checkbox and the toggle are set up. They're made for this Boolean value. Let's go in here for default. So it has a literal string value of one. Let's put that in there. Let's see if it works. Let's do the same thing for the radio buttons. We'll go down to default and put that variable in there. And then also for the default for the text and then for the default for the text box, we'll paste in the variable name. Okay, so this is looking good so far. So if I click on this button and toggle that value, look at that. Hit it again, it's turning all these on. So it is working. Now right now, the button is the only thing that actually changes this value. Why not have all these controls change it? So we'll use this code here, this set. Over here, we'll look at the action for this checkbox. 
and what we have is an on check well if they check it we definitely want it to be a true value but let me show you a, a little trick here instead of referencing a literal value true or literal value of false we'll say self dot value and what's nice about that that the keyword self refers to the current control that we're in we can just copy and paste that code over here to uncheck uh, so what's great about this we can do the same thing here boom action we click on the toggle we click on action we have an on check we have an on uncheck now let's go over here to the drop down list we'll, we'll utilize the on change so we'll take the self dot value now this is where it's not gonna like the value that it's getting okay so the self it's actually a drop down list we have to say selected selected Dot value. All we have to do here is we compare it to true. <laughs> uh, or I, I should say the literal value of true. If the value that's in that drop down list that's been selected turn into a string, if that's equal to a literal string value of true, it's going to be true. Let's go down to the radio buttons here. Actually, I'm going to use exactly what we have here. Move that down on change. So that should work fine. And then for the on change for the text box, Instead of selected.value, let's do text. So if the text typed in here is true, it's going to be true. If it's anything but true, it's going to be false. Let's run this. And it's going to be very obvious when this is actually working because we've got a spinner and everything changes with it. T R U E. Now, the on change for a text box actually doesn't happen until they click on something else. When the focus, the input focus, goes to something else, either the mouse or the keyboard. So I hit tab on my keyboard, and it's going to actually fire that event. So just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Very good. If you found anything in this video helpful, we would really appreciate you click on that like button. Are you feeling overwhelmed with Power Apps? Do you feel there's just so much to learn and you don't know where to start? Lucky for you, Darren has the solution. Discover how you can condense six months of Power App struggles in just 90 minutes. Click on the link below to learn more about Darren's Power App Deep Dive Masterclass.